welcome. I'm sure this is not the first time that the congressman has had to talk while you're uh, munching away out there, but we are uh, delighted to have our next uh, speaker. Our next uh, speaker represents uh, New York's 20th congressional district, including the uh, communities of Albany, uh, Schenectady, Troy, Saratoga Springs, and Amsterdam. Of course, we can't forget Amsterdam. And all, any and all portions of the following counties of Albany, Schenectady, Montgomery, Rensselaer, and Saratoga counties. Now in his third term in Congress, uh, congressman is a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee with jurisdiction over national energy policy, public and mental health policy, and regulation of interstate and foreign commerce. Our speaker continues to fight to bring clean energy jobs to the capital region to ensure that it maintains its status as one of the fastest growing clean technology hubs in the country. It should be noted that uh, prior to joining Congress, Congressman was a president and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. And prior to that, for many of us old timers here, he served in the New York State Assembly for 25 years, 15 years of which he was chairman of the Energy Committee in the Assembly. Graduate of Clarkson with a degree in mechanical and industrial engineering, a lifelong resident of the city of Amsterdam, New York. Let us give a green and energetic welcome to Congressman Paul Tonko. Thank you, Ed, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, great to be surrounded by so much creativity and uh, intellect and community investment. This is awesome. Um, and welcome to New York's 20th Congressional District for those of you who are outside the boundaries of the, uh, of the CD. Let me um, do a shout out and a special thanks to our sponsors, CEG and National Grid. Uh, I've enjoyed a close relationship with these uh, organizations and I know specifically that they do great things in our community and I want to acknowledge uh, uh, with great, um, with great uh, pride the relationship that we have with Michael Tucker and CEG. Michael, thank you for your leadership with the organization and for leadership in general in the region. We appreciate that immensely. <laughs> You have done some extremely important work and awesome work promoting our region and facilitating forums like this, and uh, you're to be commended. Uh, the community is also well served by so many of our um, infrastructure groups out there, and one being National Grid. I want to thank Ken Daly uh, from National Grid and the entire National Grid team here. Uh, I've seen a number of people who I've worked with for years uh, in my role as energy chair, and thank you for being of great service. And I will shoot, also do a shout out for National Grid with the flood, with the flood recovery. Um, in my old congressional seat, it was Schoharie County, Fulton County, and the remainder of Montgomery County, and flood-driven situations to which National Grid was a major responder. And we thank you to this day for making life more doable for so many businesses, farms, and individuals and families. And also a shout out, I don't believe he's here, but I know that he, you enjoyed his company yesterday with Richard Kaufman from Governor Cuomo's administration. Um, both he and Ken are longtime friends and have been wonderful partners for many years. And I just had the opportunity to speak with Dr. David Cooper Ryder. And uh, David, where are you? In the back of the room. Would you, would you know that? Um, thank you for what you're doing here, for facilitating these discussions for organizations and regions throughout the world. And we are fortunate and flattered that you have shared your time, your expertise, your talent, your passion with us here in the Capital Region. And, uh, my best to you as you continue to inspire great work from uh, all sections of our country and nations around the world. So thank you, David, for making this a wonderful work. We're also joined by a number of dignitaries and fellow elected officials today, and I know that many have stopped by. I think we have a few with us. I know that Alan uh, Gratich is here as our chair of the uh, uh, board in, in, of Supervisors in Saratoga. We're also joined by Ed Kanowski. Is Ed still in the room? Or I'm told he was here um, earlier today. And Gary McCarthy, Mayor of Schenectady. Is Gary still with us? Gary's over at that table. So thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you for your leadership and your partnership. It's truly a collaborative. And um, Alan, again, thank you for 
hosting a number of um, get-togethers that we've enjoyed in Saratoga County. It's very important as we enter into your county with the Congressional District realignment uh, to have a close working partnership, and I thank you for all that you've inspired in that regard. I uh, have the distinct privilege of serving, as you heard in the introductory remarks, on the House's Energy and Commerce Committee and its subcommittees of Energy and Power, of Investigation and Oversight, and Environment and the Economy, the subcommittee uh, of which I am ranking member. Uh, and so it's um, the oldest committee in the House. It's got tremendous reach in terms of jurisdiction and uh, speaks to a number of the issues that I'm certain you're addressing as you gathered these two days. I sought the seat on energy and commerce because I believe that it is a perfect fit for the district that uh, we call the 20th Congressional District, an area that has been dubbed one of the hottest bits of real estate in the innovation economy. I take every opportunity I can to talk about the um, ideas of the uh, great economy rise here in this region on the floor of the House, often getting feedback from my colleagues who remark, yeah, we get it, Paul, it's all about the Hudson and Mohawk Valleys of upstate New York. And so once we have their attention and their interests, I, like any proud and bragging parent, will continue to build on the uh, discussion. And I will tell them that last year, Forbes magazine ranked the Capital District fourth on the list of areas with best cities for jobs. I will also make mention that Forbes noted our commitment to a green economy and touted the fact that no other region has more workers employed in the fields with an environmental benefit associated with them. I will tout the fact that Brookings Institute also places our region among the top five metro areas, contributing at least a billion dollars annually to the clean export economy. The other metros in the top five, Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco. Folks, the global economy has found Tech Valley, Tech Valley has found the global economy, and we're asking for more attention as we move forward, rightfully so. These accolades are no mistake, and they should not come as a surprise to those of us who call this area home. If we have lived here for any number of years of late, we understand that our workforce, our schools, and our colleges were key ingredients to this success. So Laura, thank you for that, too. Um, but don't just take my word for it, or that of Forbes, or that of Brookings. Our president, President Obama, has visited our region three times since September of 2009. The administration, and certainly the president, recognize the incredible clustering and collaboration that has taken place here as the result of unique partnerships amongst the private sector, our New York State government, local communities, and our fantastic higher education community. Nowhere else in our country, and perhaps the world, have we seen such seamless integration amongst cutting edge research, private investment, and government inspired job creation. The President discussed these themes at the Hudson Valley Community College gathering in September of 2009 and again at GE in Schenectady in February of 2011, and once more at SUNY's College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering in May of 2012. Earlier this year, in his State of the Union address, the President said, and I quote, a growing economy that creates good middle-class jobs, that must be the North Star that guides our efforts. Every day, we should ask ourselves three questions as a nation. How do we attract more jobs to our shores? How do we equip our people with the skills needed in all of these jobs? And how do we make sure that hard work uh, leads to a decent living? He also talked about new initiatives in advanced manufacturing, in biomedical research, in clean energy, and in updating our aging but important infrastructure. As the President and the Administration roll out these in initiatives over the next several months, I can tell you that our region will be a contender in these fields. But we are a contender solely because people like you have come together and have determined that this should be a priority for our region. Yes, we have demonstrated the capacity to compete for and win the attention and the investments of the global leaders in the innovation economy, but that marks only the beginning. This week's holistic and strategic planning exercises will make our region more competitive, more agile, and prepared for the next wave of innovation and will be critical to our continued growth and success. Yesterday, I understand that you took time to identify the foundations of our success, the momentum we have developed and the sustained vision that exists for the future and the concepts for future collaboration. 
Then you got into some outside the box thinking, the kind of thinking I love. I'm anxious to hear more about the concepts and the proposals. It's interesting looking at the boards around the room that you've developed on day two and how the 20th Congressional District, District team might be able to assist you in making these ideas a, re a reality. I also know that you're discussing how to best recognize, best promote, and best leverage our existing assets and manufacture in order to, an infrastructure in order to enhance our competitive edge over the next 10 or 25 or even 50 years. A good, robust discussion and plan for our hard infrastructure is critically important to our future. But I also noted that the prestigious rankings we received from Forbes and Brookings was also the result of our people, our workforce, that make up our unique innovation ecosystem. Collectively, our people, our institutions, and existing infrastructure are the foundations that create our geography of opportunity. From that foundation, we pioneered a model for building upon existing assets or clusters of industry and research, leveraging our strengths and enticing cooperation across industry, government, and higher education. We did this through the development of co-equal partnerships that bring our government, the private sector, and the higher education community together for a common purpose and an open dialogue that fosters and uh, not competition, but collaboration. Not competition, but collaboration. Each of you working in a collaborative fashion and discussing big ideas and how we fit into a larger narrative are the secret to our success as a region. So how do we sustain and further develop our geography of opportunity? so as to have a competitive edge for the long term. First, we must keep a sense of humility in mind as we move forward. For our achievements cannot be sustained uh, nor built upon without the co-equal partnerships we pioneered here in Tech Valley. Second, we must look at our region as less than a collection of disparate communities or interests. We are one region, one ecosystem. The sources of one community or the success of one community in its pursuit of the next big project or investment is our regional success. Just as a difficulty amongst one community is a shared problem where we can all pitch in and offer support or advice, so too are we guided by that sort of syndrome. And third, we must recognize that when Washington gets stuck, we stay focused on, on succeeding and serve as that success story. Remember, the President came here three times. He came three times to tout our work as a national model. Do not let temporary gridlock distract nor deter. We have seized upon the opportunity provided by advanced manufacturing, a sector that can return $1.35 to local communities for each dollar invested. This is our future. This is the emerging sector of the economy for which every region in our nation should be competing. We are steps ahead because of our sound foundation. But if we are to truly compete in a global 21st century high-tech economy, we must nurture that cooperation and collaboration amongst all players and stakeholders. Remember, our original success did not happen overnight or in a vacuum. It was the result of many years of careful planning, relying on all three legs of the stool, the private sector, higher education community, and state government particularly five successive governors, ranging from Governor Mario Cuomo to Governor Pataki to Governor Spitzer to Governor Patterson and now Governor Andrew Cuomo, and the state legislature led by Speaker Silver and our former neighbor, Majority Leader Bruno, who all recognized this potential and took a chance in the initial investments in a then little known field called nanotechnology. But New York State and local entities like those represented here today cannot continue to do this alone. We need greater cooperation from Congress to add to the public sector involvement in order to accomplish the bold agenda set forth by the President. Further, we need a commitment of additional investment in infrastructure, in research, in education, so that we are prepared for the next wave of innovation driven by global competition, investment in cyclical and predictable advancements in technology, like that of Moore's Law, which states that the number of transistors on integrated circuits doubles approximately every two years. As a region, if we're to maintain our competitive edge in this global competition for jobs, innovation and investment, a competition that we have entered to win, not simply be listed as a participant, 
We cannot afford to be complacent. Our regional infrastructure that you're evaluating today can attract and sustain the industries of the future. I believe that a successful and competitive regional plan should recognize and promote three ingredients that are key to winning the future. First, a robust and dynamic workforce. But keep in mind, this is not a race to the bottom in terms of competitive wages. Our wages, our compensation must be competitive in order to attract that desired skill set that is so great amongst the most transient and potable notions of the world that are changing this world and providing the sort of key laser sharp focus. Research as another ingredient, as a competitive edge for any community, for any nation. Research can inspire additional sophistication and solutions. For research equals jobs, good paying jobs. And finally, an open and collaborative community. Those of you here today are here because you see opportunity. You're motivated by opportunity and a desire to exchange and expand and improve our existing quality of life. We need more leaders like you who can come together, address the big ideas, and not only develop a plan, but a commitment to make that plan happen. I would like to commend each of you for your role in making our region the best district in the country to represent. My colleagues in Washington look at me with envy when they hear about the wonderful work we're doing each and every day. And that is truly a compliment to your commitment to this process and those ideas. I pledge to continue to work as hard as I possibly can to promote your work in Washington and beyond. Together, I believe there will be tremendous opportunity for our region to step up and play a key role in a number of exciting initiatives and opportunities offered at a national and international level. These achievements belong to each of you and the people that make up Tech Valley, as well as our fantastic network of colleges and universities that train Tech Valley, and our private sector, the custodians of a strong and storied local tradition of invention in entrepreneurship dating back to Edison. This is the heritage of Tech Valley, something which no other region in the world can claim as theirs and truly reflects our geography of opportunity. Thank you for your time yesterday and today. Thank you for the work that you do tirelessly to develop, to plan, to dream, to scheme, to define, and to decide the future of Tech Valley. As I look around this room, I see many very busy people. To take two full days out of your schedule speaks of your commitment, of your dedication, of your drive to this effort. And I thank you for continuing to make this the best congressional district in the nation for an engineer and Milltown kid from Amsterdam, New York, to represent in the United States House of Representatives. Thank you very much, as I'm very much looking forward to further collaboration and inspiration as we get to work. In conclusion, I share my observations from the Washington perspective of late. The menace of sequestration can really be a stonewall in our operations. It can deny our dreams. It can suffocate our growth. We have built a rock-solid foundation. All of you in this room have built that rock-solid foundation in a selfless order of, of contribution. Shame on us if we don't capitalize on that foundation. We have priorities to which we need to loyally, loyally respond. We cannot dumb down research. We cannot disinvest in our education and higher education infrastructure. We cannot ignore our traditional infrastructure needs and the futuristic needs of that infrastructure. We cannot deny our obligations to our workforce and the development of a sound workforce. While a hidden and all too forgotten force, sequestration will limit the ability to build the infrastructure of opportunity, an infrastructure based upon capital, physical, and human infrastructure. Sequestration ushers in a decade-long defunding and denial of what ought to be the main ingredients toward a recipe for success. Clearly, our nation needs to see sound, predictable, and efficient government join in the existing efforts to build an innovation economy. The antics over the past month, hopefully, have been instructive that we need government to provide bipartisan response that will empower our nation to be robustly competitive in an international marketplace. Beyond those instructive moments of the present, I'm reminded of two historic motivators that should inspire us routinely. The first 
We are talking about Tech Valley, the evolution of a region with a cutting edge, clean energy, high tech innovation economy. But we understand that the first Tech Valley was the Erie Canal system to which the 20th Congressional District was host. It is in our DNA. It is in our DNA. This pioneer spirit, the sense of coming together, picking up tools and working together, the sense of letting loose on ideas that will build stronger communities, a better state, a quality nation, a kinder generation. That is the spirit of this valley. The Hudson and Mohawk Valleys were hosts to that powerful westward movement. And so it revisits us in the present. And its commitment like that in this room, the vision to work in a partnership. I said to David earlier that what bothers me most right now in Washington is this sense of disconnect. Mm -hmm. Disconnect from programs, disconnect from each other. We are a nation at our best when we connect when we understand the value of partnerships, of neighborhoods, of working as a team, we need to inspire that connection. And the second motivator that I think is historic that speaks to many in the room, and certainly if you weren't there for the moment, we can read about it. But the global race on space was a test after we had failed in a Sputnik moment. And we dusted off our backside and said, never again. And because of a passionate resolve, where we came together in multipartisan measure, where a youthful president led this nation to say we will be the first to place the American flag on the moon, to place any nation's flag on the moon. And shaking the hand of Neil Armstrong in 2009, my first year of serving in Congress, brought it to light. Here, this giant who was to deliver the American message to the surface of the moon, it was more than a poetic, poetic moment of one small step for man, one giant step for mankind. It was the unleashing of untold bits of technology that influenced our quality of life, built our economy, and underpinned the power of this American economy. And so again, we're faced with this entrance into a, an international race, this time on clean energy and innovation and high tech. And it's not just US versus USSR. It is countless numbers of nations who are investing in their communities, in their public-private partnerships with job creation and creativity and in, in all sorts of ingenuity. Can we walk away from this moment as a region, as a state, as a country? I say we dare not. So let us commit with great resolve and great energy to go forward and work as we have in this room. I'm inspired by this. I'm inspired by the partnership. I'm inspired by what can happen when we put our vision on paper and then reach to those four C's that I know you're focusing on. The clarity, the communication, the collaboration, the coordination. Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. You sense a vision, you put it into a message, you share it so people know where you're going, what you want to do. It applies to business, it applies to politics. People will say, what do you stand for? I heard about what's bad about the other person. We want to know what you will do if you run for office or get elected. So people want the vision, the clarity, and you communicate it to them and then you build. You put the plan together with the collaboration and then you bring the regional quality to the outstanding work of coordination. And we are a region to be reckoned with. We are a region that is dubbed the most powerful with job growth and clean energy and innovation in this country. And so I will not stay quiet. I will work with you and demand orders of investment so that we can continue to put layers upon that foundation that speaks to our tomorrow. Countless, countless bits of energy that will be put into this synergetic effort, into the symbiotic relationship that you'll enjoy so that generations that will follow us can look back and say they got it in that moment of time and they did it with extreme passion. As we were mentioned at a symposium in Hudson Valley Community College a, about a year ago with Chuck Wessner, he said, you know, congratulations, you've done some terrific work and built a wonderful model here. You're only on the first lap, keep going. Well, I look forward to being on those many laps to come and let's go get them. Let's go get them with all the energy and innovation and creativity and partnership.
Thank you so much. So Michael has asked if anyone has any questions. I wasn't supposed to touch the mic. I'm sorry. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I think we have room for a couple. No, no, no. I mean, here she's got a mic. Anybody? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, this is like the uh, Oprah Winfrey show. I like this. Anyone? Any comments? Any questions? Any suggestions to to carry back on my behalf? All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. Any insights on uh, the energy landscape at the national level from a perspective of uh, national energy policy, what you see uh, may be coming in the rest of this session? Well, it's somewhat disconcerting that we can't do a tremendous inclusive measure on energy transformation. We did it back in 2009, it passed the House, called ACES, the American Clean Energy Security Act. Um, since then, it's been tough sledding because there's this rigidity when it comes to further investing or spending, as some would say. I, I see it as investing. There's no denying that in August of 03, when um, the Northeast suffered a tremendous uh, blackout, that there was an economic impact on several communities, including South Canada, Southeast Canada, and the entire Eastern Seaboard. Um, I was there as energy chair. We had hearings to just absorb what needed to be done next. And our infrastructure was designed, as so many of you in this room know, for a monopoly setting. And now we're wheeling electrons from region to region, state to state, country to country. There is a requirement to upgrade that system. Uh, there's a requirement to um, have the interconnections done. Uh, in fact, the president has envisioned that through NNMI, where an application out there now will create the science and technology that will make for some better interconnections for renewables to the standing grid. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and we need to focus, I think, on American-produced energy. Our gluttonous thirst for fossil-based fuels, I think, is, um, is not the approach we need to take. So right now, to answer your question, the best that I think we're able to do will probably be some of the low-hanging fruit of an energy efficiency bill, which helps. I think energy efficiency should be seen as our fuel of choice, but there's far more that we need to do. And I think it's the glowing example of the Cleveland experience inspired by David uh, Copperhead, writer, um, Cooper Ryder. He, uh, I, I just enjoyed looking at what happened in Cleveland, where you were able to take a, a prototype of wind power for a first time over the Great Lakes, at the Great Lakes, and then to inspire advanced manufacturing that inspired research and development, which equals jobs, which inspired infrastructure hookup for electric use, which inspired cleaner air outcomes, which inspired a whole bit of clean technology that drives for cleaner air. I mean, that's local action fitting into a global plan. And that's the kind of prototyping that will build an innovation economy. And I just think that that's great stuff. And just knowing that that can be inspired by clusterings like this um, is great news that will probably, hopefully, drive the legislative process. My belief is that as leaders elected to Congress were to be ahead of the curve and inspire this sort of outcome, that doesn't always happen. So, Alan. Thanks, Congressman. Uh, as you know, coming from a rural town, um, our problem now with uh, broadband is the last mile uh, wiring. Um, and, and I know, I, I think in this room, it's been a theme that's come up a lot of time. Broadband is now like the power, it's like the telephone. Should be considered the same, same thing. If these operators wanna, wanna have these monopolies, they should have to wire town from end to end. Uh, I have a lot of rural areas that want to market through the internet, and, and they can't because the density isn't there to be able to run the, the broadband out to them. Right. So that's something at the federal level. Uh, you guys should be able to drop a hammer on some it's, of it. It's part of the infrastructure that we um, envision. 
there was a great down payment made through the Stimulus Act, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which placed a lot of um, improvement uh, in projects throughout the country. But there's an infrastructure bank bill uh, 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 that I have put my name onto. It's led by Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut. Um, and it provides for a more doable outcome with um, a good working relationship with public-private funds to advance what we can do in infrastructure. You know, I think that this region with its, again, cutting edge thinking, reach into some of those sciences that were never really deeply uh, explored, um, serves now to be inspired uh, by its own growth to move forward. Um, any chance I have, I try to tout what's happening here. Uh, we have what are called special orders on the floor every week and uh, a couple of times a week. I will make it my goal to get there many times a month, oftentimes once a week, to just speak to the virtues of this district and what it's doing with a sustainable agenda. And that triggers calls from around the country. We get emails from around the country saying, tell us more about what's happening in your district. And you know, when you're able to serve on the Energy and Commerce Committee, you can then land some speaking assignments, as I did with the um, Council for um, Sustainable Business, uh, which is green thinking businesses that, with whom we just met recently. They're promoting a tremendous agenda in Washington, as is the Council on Competitiveness that I was just at uh, a couple of nights ago uh, that is tremendously recognized for the work it's doing, along with the Alliance to Save Energy, which is large corporations talking about having wiser energy use, more resourceful, resourceful use of our energy supplies. I'm on their, on their board uh, as a um, ex officio, and I really think they're doing great work to promote the consciousness in the legislative ranks so that uh, we can move forward with a sound agenda. But what I see happening here is like ahead of the curve of many of the discussions you have with colleagues. Make no mistake about it. And I should share this with you because sometimes we get down on our own cause. When I went to Washington, um, and after having served here for 25 years in the State Assembly, I thought, well, everybody's going to be teaching you something. And that's true, they do. But so many people come to you saying, tell me what New York is doing. I have to tell you, so many states want to know what we're doing here. And I think we have to see ourselves as leaders. Leaders in industry, leaders in academia, leaders in government, in providing a cutting edge agenda. And sometimes we don't see that, we're so deeply involved that uh, we just think that uh, perhaps we're not making enough progress. But make no mistake about it, you have put together a community called a congressional district that is the pride and joy to represent. Any other, were there, was there another hand up somewhere? Well, I, I wanted to ask, because I think your perspective is a little bit different than some of our elected officials. You really have been. Yeah. Well, That's what happens when you elect engineers. <laughs> <laughs> the, geeks, the geeks are taking over. Well, a geek, you're a geek that we love, but you grew up here. You grew up here and you worked at right. all levels of government, especially right. at the state level. And I think one of the things we heard yesterday was that where movement has occurred, often there have been great leaders who've done it, who've had the skill set to bring people together. I think we're coming up with the vision, we're coming up with the plan, and even with the prototypes. And we're going to need leaders like you to help bring everyone on board, and I hope we can count on you to do that. Absolutely. If, um, I've worked with many in the room, and my joy in this job is not just voting on budgets, voting on legislation, providing consumer serv constituent services, uh, but actually getting involved in projects, some of which I've tried to inspire, which uh, kind of like raises the amount of commitment that you make in hours and time and energy. But you know what? You only go around once, and I think we're all here for a purpose, and our purpose is to build a better world. And somehow we're given talents of a special order, unique to us, and we all have a role to play. And so I'm thrilled about that. Let me just, in closing, thank you for your kind attention and the opportunity to share some thoughts with you. And also, you know, I know high on your list is infrastructure and a number of other things that I took in when I uh, read about what was happening here. But I'm happy to see that there's also the quality of life infrastructure. Our waterfront development, the, the space we call home, the green space that we need to preserve. And, um, you know, our waterways are not only our natural resource, they're an historic resource. And so we need to build upon that because when we put this science and tech agenda together and when we complement that 
with a powerful investment along the waterways, we now become a destination. And you know the competition, the sweepstakes for jobs are robust. And if you invest in cultural and arts and, and, and resource infrastructure, you're now maybe being the tiebreaker that you need in many of those competitive sweepstakes upon which you uh, apply for resources. So let's make it happen. I uh, couldn't be happier to be in this room knowing that uh, here's doers. You know, I've been around a lot of deniers lately. <laughs> this is rejuvenating. This is rejuvenating. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.